All right, so let's talk um, similarity and dilations. And we're going to start with dilations as kind of our foundation for this. So we're going to start talking about the way that you would construct a dilation. So create similar triangles, and we're going to use a scale factor of three. So the first thing that I would want to do to construct a dilation is figure out where's my center of dilation, which in this case is this point right here. And I'm going to draw in my projection lines. So those are going to go from the center of dilation through the image point or the pre-image point. And those are going to go like this for each of them. And if they're not perfect, we can adjust them a little bit. So there's those. Okay. So now, to dilate this by a scale factor of 3, I would take my compass and I would measure the length from the center to a particular point, and I would copy that length out two more times. So there's 1 and 2. So now there are 3 of those same lengths right here. So now we're going to repeat this for the other points as well. So from this point, I'm going to copy that length out here and out here. For this point, I'm going to copy that length out here and here. And so I wind up with three new points. There's one, there's the next, there's the next. And I'm going to connect each of those. And this is going to be my dilated image. So that would be a dilation after a, um, with a scale factor of three. Now, important things to notice here. Notice that my lines map to parallel lines, right? That maps to that, those are parallel. That maps to that, those are parallel. That maps to that, those are parallel. So first of all, I notice that my lines are parallel. Second of all, I notice that it's three times further from the center. And it's also three times larger but the angle measures are equal. And so that's important when you have something that's dilated, angle measure is preserved. So not a rigid motion, but angle measure is still preserved. So let's look at some questions about dilations. So ABC is dilated by a scale factor three, three, just like what we just did. What statement is true? So first of all, angle measure is preserved, so it can't be three or four. Now, what I know is that if I have the pre-image, that's the original, right? I will multiply that by 3, and that should give me the image. So this one says take the image and multiply that by 3, so it can't be 1. This one says take the pre-image and multiply that by 3, and so this should be answer choice 2. The next one says line segment A prime B prime, whose endpoints are this, is the image after a dilation of a half. So it is half as big as AB. Okay, what is the length of AB? So first of all, let's find the length of A prime B prime. So I'm gonna use the distance formula to do that. So 16 minus four squared, 14 minus negative two squared. So that gives me 144 plus 256, which is the square root of 400, which is 20. So now what I need to remember is that 20, A prime, B prime, is half as long as AB, which means A prime, B, or AB must be 40. All right, next one. A three inch segment is dilated by a scale factor of six, centered at its midpoint. What is the length of its image? So here's what this means. If this is my segment and it's dilated here, this endpoint will get six times further away and this endpoint would get six times further away. And so this is dilated by a scale factor of six. It is going to be three or six times larger, which would be 18. Next one, a line passes through these points dilated by a scale factor of three, what centered at the origin. So I'm just going to sketch this. One one's here, five seven's up here. So that's my segment. Notice when I have this, 
that segment does not go through this point. So when I dilate it, that means it's going to be parallel because it doesn't pass through the origin. That means it's not the original line and it's not going to be perpendicular. All right, next one. Uh, what is a corresponding sequence of similarity transformations? That tells me that there's a dilation involved so that these are similar. So first of all, uh, what happens here? So I see that there's some sort of rotation, definitely a rotation, and definitely a rotation 90 degrees. So I'm going to say not 180, not 180. So counterclockwise 90 followed by a translation or followed by a dilation. If it's a similarity transformation, there's definitely a change in size in this example, and so that's going to be 4. All right, next one. This is our scale factor. This is a dilation. What statement must be true? Well, the angle measure doesn't change, so it's not 3 or 4. And so let's see which our corresponding angles are. BAC, that's this. AED. I have no reason to believe those would be congruent, so not that. But ABC is this, and AD is that, and those are corresponding, so it would be choice two. All right, the next one. In this diagram, CD is the image of AB after a dilation. What ratio is equal to the scale factor? So CB is the image of AB after a dilation. So notice that this got smaller, right? So that means my scale factor is less than one. So let's think about that as we do this. So the first one says EC over EA. Well, that could be that's smaller over bigger, that's final over initial, so maybe that. Let's look at the next one. BA over EA. Those are not corresponding. That is not it. Next one, EA over BA. Not that either. Okay, not that either. Same thing, not corresponding. The next one, EA over EC. So that's big over small. This would be greater than one. This one would be less than one. So it's going to be that. So you can always do like your final divided by your initial to get your scale factor. All right, next one, the coordinates of this undergo a dilation centered at point A with a scale factor of 2. So what that tells me is that this should get twice as far away from A. So to get to B, we go down 1 over 1. So to get to B prime, I'm going to go down 1 over 1 again. So that is B prime. To get to C, I go down 3 left 1. To, so to get to C prime, I'm going to go down 3 left 1. So that is C prime. And that would be my dilated segment. So what are my coordinates? Well, B would be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. And so that's either 3, 1, or 4. And C would be at 1, negative 2. So this is answer choice 1. The reason that I couldn't just multiply on this was because my center was not at the origin. You just multiply when your center is at the origin. All right, so let's go to the next one. So on this one, I see that this was a dilation. They give me the points, and they want the ratio of BE to CD. So I'm going to look at two corresponding sides where it's easier for me to find those lengths. You could do distance formula here, but again, let's, let's take the easier road. So this is 4, and this is 6, and those are corresponding. So the ratio of BE to CD should be the same. So this is 4 over 6 which is 2 over 3, because the similarity ratio should be the same for any of the sides. All right, the next one, we have a dilation. What must always be true? Well, the angles are not changing size, so this ratio should definitely not be changing, right? The ratio should not be something other than 1, because the ratio or the angle size is not changing. So now let's look at these. So 3 and 4 say the measure of angle A over the measure of angle C is the measure of angle F over the measure of angle D. 
So let's kind of mark these up and see if this seems true. Are those corresponding? Well, yes, they are corresponding, but look at how they're matched. Those are not matched up, right? Those are not corresponding angles specifically. So this is not true because we're not dividing corresponding parts. So now let's try this. Angle B over angle E, those seem to be corresponding. Angle C over angle F, those are corresponding. So I know that it's this. So you always want to divide corresponding parts when you're talking about similarity. All right, next part, we had a dilation of a scale factor of k centered at point A. Notice my scale factor is k, so it is unknown. That means we cannot know what the ratio of the sides is. So, which is always true? Well, is AB, is twice AB equal to AD? It might look like it, but since I don't know the scale factor, this can't be true. Are these perpendicular? It might look like it, but I don't know, so that can't be true. The next one is AC equal to CE. It might look like it, but I don't know the scale factor, so that can't be true. But are these lines parallel? Well, if we dilate it, it will be taken to a parallel line. So yes, that is true. All right, next one, a triangle is dilated by a scale factor of three with a center of dilation at the origin. Which statement is true? So the area is nine times the area of the original. Maybe, I'm not sure. Let's wait on that. The perimeter is nine times the perimeter of the original. Maybe, I'm not sure. Let's see about that. The slope is three times the slope of any other side. Well, we know that the lines are parallel, so slope should be preserved. The measure of each angle is three times. Angle measure is preserved. So it's either one or two. Now, perimeter is just the side lengths. Remember that. Perimeter is just your side lengths. And so if the side lengths are being multiplied by three, the perimeter would also just get multiplied by three. But remember when you talk about area, you're talking about units squared, right? So we would also be talking about the scale factor squared. So three would get squared, and so the ratio of my areas would be nine. So it would be that. All right, this one is gonna be dilated by a scale factor of three over two. Use slopes to explain why these are parallel. So r is at 2, 0. To find r prime, I'm going to multiply each part by 3 over 2. So 2 times 3 over 2 is 3. 0 times 3 over 2 is 0. So that point would be r prime. s is located at 4, 6. So for s prime, I'm going to multiply by 3 over 2. So this would be 6 and this would be 9, so this would be right here, S prime. And Q is located at negative 2, 2, so Q prime is located at negative 3, 3. So negative 3, 3, Q prime's right here. So this would be my image after the dilation. Now, explain why these are parallel. Well, the slope of QR is negative 2 over 4 and the slope of q prime r prime is negative 2 over 4 and parallel lines have equal slopes. Now you could also say here dilations map lines to parallel lines but you could also use that and you need to use slope to explain it. Okay. You need to use slope to explain it. Okay, so another topic you're going to see is being asked to dilate a line. So I want to think about this. When I dilate, I'm moving further away from a center. So let's say this is my center and this is my line, right? So if I want to think about, well, how far is this line from the center? The line is on the center, right? So currently it's zero away from the center. So if I dilate that, if I take that distance and multiply it by 5 or 10 or whatever, it's still going to be 0 away. So if we dilate with a center that's on the line, the line doesn't change, okay? The line doesn't change. If the center is not on the line, though, let's say my center is here and my line is here, 
right? Then what would happen? Well, now I can move away from that. So let's say I dilate this by two. So I want to be twice as far away. So that's two, so go another two away. That's two, so go another two away. And this would be my dilated segment. So now look at what happened. The lines stay parallel. They have the same slope. So the lines are parallel. But the y-intercept definitely changes, okay? The, that changes. So in this case, the slope stays the same. And the y-intercept changes. And think about that the y-intercept is a point, right? So that will dilate, but slope is not a point. So that doesn't dilate. So let's do a couple of examples with this. So line n is represented by the equation 3x plus 4y equals 20. Determine and state the equation line p, the image after a dilation of a scale factor of 1 third, centered at the point 4, 2. So my center is here. And I am going to graph this line. So that disappeared. There we go. Okay, so uh, 3x plus 4y equals 20. Let's solve that for y. So 4y equals negative 3x plus 20. Divide everything by 4. So y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 5. So this is going to have a y-intercept of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it has a slope of negative 3 fourths. So down 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is my line. Now, it tells me that my center is at 4, 2. So currently, this line is 0 away from the center, right? Line is 0 away from the center. So if we dilate that distance, guess what my dilation is still going to be? Still going to be 0. So line P is the same line as this. It's 3x plus 4y equals 20, or y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 5. The line doesn't change. And again, that's because it goes through the center. All right, the next one, line L is mapped to M by a dilation centered at the origin, scale factor of 2. This is my line, determined and state the equation for line M. So I'm going to solve this for y also, y equals 3x plus 4 or sorry, minus 4. And this does not go through the origin because the y-intercept is negative 4. So because it doesn't go through the origin, I know that this will actually dilate. It doesn't go through the center. So the slope is going to stay the same because the line stays parallel. But this is actually a point, so that's going to dilate by my scale factor. And that's it. We're done. All right, two more of these. So 3y or equals 2x minus 8 or plus 8 is dilated centered at the origin, which could be its image. So what we need is for there to be the same slope here. So this line is really y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 8. So m is negative 2 thirds. So I need to find the slope of each of these lines, and I want this to be the same. So for this one, I would subtract the 2x over and I would divide by 3. So that has a slope of negative 2 thirds. For this, I would subtract the 2x over and divide by positive 3, so that, or negative 3, so that would actually become positive 2 thirds. For this one, I would subtract the 3x over and divide by 2, so that's wrong. And for this, I would subtract the 3x over and divide by negative 2, so that's wrong. So it's got to be the one that matches because the lines must be parallel. All right, next one, this is uh, transformed by a dilation with a scale factor of 2 centered at 3, 8. What is the line's image? Well, let's kind of sketch this, okay? 3, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 3, 8 up here, and 3x minus 1 is like this. It goes starts at negative 1, goes up 1, 2, 3 over 1, goes up 1, 2, 3 over 1, Goes up 1, 2, 3 over 1. Guess what? That goes right through my center because my center was here. So the line's image is the same as the line, which is answer choice 4. 
All right, let's talk about a little bit more stuff with just basic similarity. Um, so let's look at this. Given that these are similar, knowing that these are parallel, um, I have vertical angles, I have alternate interior angles, right? So angle, angle similarity gives me that similarity, which must be true. So I'm looking here always for corresponding parts. So CE over DE equals EB over EA. Well, this is big over small, and this is small over big. So it can't be that because we're switching triangles. The next one, I've got AE over BE is AC over BD. Well, that's corresponding, and that's big over big, or big over small, and big over small. So my guess is it's going to be two. So let's check the other ones, okay? EC over AE equals BE over ED. Now this one's actually not true because this and this are corresponding parts. And EC is here and DE is down here. So it can't be that because those are not corresponding. All right, and then the last one, I've got uh, ED and EC. So ED and EC and then AC and BD. So again, this is small over big and big over small. So the only one that is in corresponding order is answer choice two. All right, next one. If AC is six, DC is four, FC is 15, and that's 65, what is the measure of CB? Well, if this is 115, then that's 65. So we have congruent angles, and these are vertical, so we have congruent. So by angle, angle similarity, these are similar. So I'm gonna do some corresponding parts here. Six is to 15 as, let me change colors, four is to x. So I get six x equals 60, so x equals 10, boom. All right, next questions. Um, all right, let's look at this one. AC is 12, DC is seven, DE is 5, and the perimeter of ABC is 30. Uh, what is the perimeter of DEC? So, um, and this is the big one. So here's what I'm going to look at. The ratio of my sides here, and look at corresponding sides, is 12 to 7. So ratio of the sides is 12 to 7. The ratio of the sides is the same as the ratio of the perimeters. So that will be 30 to X. So cross multiply those, this is 210 equals 12x, divide both sides by 12, and that will give you your answer. All right, next one, if AB is 9, BC is 15, DE is 6, EF is 10, and angle B is congruent to angle E, did I label those right? AB is 9, BC is 15. There we go, Mrs. G. Um, so these are similar by side, angle, side, similarity, because 15 over 10 is equal to 9 over 6. Those are both 3 over 2. So which is true? Well, I know they're similar. So that one has to be true. The other ones, we can figure out AB over DE, FE over CB, that's backwards, that doesn't work, and CAB would be this angle, and DEF would be a different angle. So that's why it has to be that they're similar. And also just by side angle side similarity. Okay, partitioning segments. I guarantee you will see this, and I would like you to do it by just sort of graphing these if you need to. So MQ to QN is 2 to 3. So that's five pieces. M has a coordinate 3, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's that point. And N has a coordinate 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be down here. So that is MN. And I'm going to make that a little bit straighter. So let's see where this gets us. I'm going to draw in a right triangle. And I want to partition this into five parts. So I'm going to break this bottom piece up into its five parts because that's five long, so each piece should be one. So going two to three, that would be right here. And I'm going to follow that up, and that would give me the point five, one. So there are other ways to do this again, but if you just graph it, partition the bottom part of it, and that will give you your point. All right, let's try another one. Let's do this one that's not multiple choice. PT has endpoints at negative 2, 1, and at 4, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And again, you will have graph paper, so yours does not need to look like mine. All right, so let's draw in our right triangle. And this bottom length, is 6. So I want to rate, partition this in a ratio of 2 to 1, so that's 3 total parts. So if it's 6, then every um, 2 that I go over will be 3. So right there and right there, right? So that's 1 part, 2 part, 3 part. So a ratio of 2 to 1 is right here. So I'm going to follow that up. So that will be at the point 2 and then if I follow that up, it takes me to right here, 6. And again, on a graph, it'd be very easy to see that. All right, let's try one more. Um, and I'll do this one algebraically. How about that? So D, E, F, D, and F are at 1, 4, and 16, 14. Find E that partitions in a ratio of 2 to 3. So five parts. So doing this algebraically, and again, you can just graph it out, but my change in x and my change in y. Change in x here from 1 to 16 is up 15. Change in y from 4 to 14 is 10. And we want to go 2 out of 5 parts over because a ratio of 2 to 3, we have 5 total parts, and I want to go 2 of those parts over, so that's 2 fifths. So I'm going to multiply each of these by 2 fifths, so this one is 6, and this one is 4. So my change in x will be 6, my change in y will be 4. I'm going to start at d, which is 1, 4. My change in x is 6, my change in y is 4, so that is 7, 8. So again, that's how you could do it algebraically, but you would get just as good a credit for doing it this way from a graph. So the last thing we're going to think about here are the types of relationships we see, either part to part or part to whole. So if I look at this sort of example, I've got 2 and 4, and those are both parts of a side. X and 7, and those are both parts of a side. And this is called the side splitter theorem, which says that if two lines, or if a line is, two lines are parallel in a triangle, then they divide the sides proportionally. So in this one, I could say 2 over 4 is x over 7 because those slides are split proportionally. Now, in this one, this is different because x and 1 are not parts of a side. They are full sides. But 1 is just a part of a side. It's not a full side there. So my strategy here is to redraw two triangles. This little triangle, which is 2 and x, and then the whole big triangle the bottom side would be 3, and this would be 1. And so my strategy there is to redraw and then go from there. So I would do 2 over 3 equals x over 1. And then there are problems like this where you can kind of choose the way you want to do it. So if I wanted to do this as part to whole, I could say, okay, well, this is 17 and 16, and this is x, and then 38, and set that up, right? 17 over x is 16 over 38. The other way I could do it is do part to part and just know that if the whole thing is x and this is 17, 
then this piece would be x minus 17. And I could say 17 over x minus 17 equals 16 over 22. Those are equally valid methods. They will get you the same answer. It just matters which you're more comfortable with. So let's try a couple examples of this. So if I look at this one, I'm given that the lines are parallel. That tells me side splitter theorem will apply. And so then I can say AT is 5, TB is 7, AV is 10, and it wants to know the length of VC. So notice what we have, part, 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 right? So this is side splitter theorem. So I could say 5 over 7 is 10 over X. I'm going to cross multiply those. So 5X equals 70. Divide both sides by 5. So X equals 14. And that is my length. Let's look at a different one. So if I look at this one, I see that those are parallel, right? AD is 24, DB is 12, DE is 4, what is AC? And we see the parallel, so we're like, oh, side splitter applies, of course. Well, the problem is these are not whole sides, right? Or those are not parts of sides, they are whole sides. So since those are whole sides, I'm gonna redraw my two triangles. So here's the big end. That's x, this is 36. Here's the little n, that's 12 and four. And then set up your proportion using your corresponding parts. So x over four is 36 over 12. Cross multiply, so 12x equals 36 times four, which is 144. Divide both sides by x. 12, and so x equals 12. All right, the next one, what is the length of AC? So I want this length here. Now you've got options here. You can either redraw your two triangles and use 9 and 9.2, and then 14 and x, or you could rewrite this as x minus 9.2. In that case, you would do 9 over 5 equals 9.2 over x minus 9.2. In this case down here, I would do 9 over 14 equals 9.2 over x. So it's really all about your preference with ones like that, where you know some parts and you could rewrite some stuff as parts. All right, so this has come up a lot on the Regents in various years. So in this one, we've got all these distances. Uh, state the distance from B to C, right? So I see that these are whole side lengths, so I'm going to redraw my triangles. So this one would be 230 and 120, and then this one would be X and 315. And again, we could set up our proportion there using corresponding parts. The last one of these I want to try is this one with a flagpole because it's a little funny to draw. So we have a flagpole, it casts a shadow that is 16.6 .6 meters long. Tim stands 12.45 meters from the flagpole such that his shadow meets the flagpole shadow at the end. So here's Tim and his shadow is meeting the flagpole shadow. We know that he is 12.45 meters from the base. I know that Tim is 1.65 meters tall. What is the height of the flagpole? So what I need to do is turn this into a triangle. And so I'm gonna make this into two similar triangles. And I know they're similar because I've got parallel sides. And so think about this. I want this whole length. I know this. So I'm gonna redraw this as two triangles. So this one here would be X and 16.6. This one here would be 1.65. And then this length would have to be the whole length, 16.6, .6, minus this part of a length, 12.45. So that side would be 4.15. And then again, you can set up your proportion. X over 1.65 is 16.6 .6 over 4.15. And cross multiply and just watch. Make sure you're rounding to the nearest tenth. All right, some weird examples. Let's look at this one. Notice that these are not looking to be parallel. 
So they tell me that angle H is congruent to angle RDO. What that shows me is that this triangle got flipped around, okay? So I'm actually going to wind up redrawing this. And I will show you guys how in a second, but let's label what we know. So RD is 4, RO is 6, OH is 4, and I want to know CD. So I'm going to redraw this so they're oriented the same way. So in this one, that would give me that this bottom side is 10, and this side over here is X plus 4. And I'm going to reorient this, that's angle H, so that angle D is over here. Angle D is over here. So that's angle D. So this side would be um, 4, and this side would be 6, because that's across from angle D. So that's here. So now these are in corresponding parts. So then I can do 10 over 4 is x plus 4 over 6. And again, I could cross multiply those to solve. Same thing on this one. Notice not exactly parallel, right? Those are not parallel. But I know that angle C is congruent to angle OTU. So again, it got flipped around. So TU is 4, OU is 5, OC is 7. What is ST? So I'm going to kind of think about this if it got flipped around. So this, if it got flipped around, would give me 7 and X, and then 5 and 4. Those would get flipped, right? And then these angles would be in a corresponding position. So this would give me X, 5 over X equals 4 over 7. Cross multiply those, and you will get your final answer. Okay, last thing I want to talk about in this video are similar triangle proofs. Three theorems, side, angle, side, similarity, side, 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 similarity, and angle, angle, similarity. This one is the most common. So let's do two of these. So I know that these are parallel, and I want to show that the triangles are similar. Well, I see angle, angle already because I see vertical angles. I'm going to call those angle one and angle two. And I see alternate interior angles because I have this kind of zigzag, right, between my parallel lines. So I'm going to call that 3 and 4. So on the regents, remember, you will rewrite your whole given. For the sake of time right now, I'm not going to do that, but you would rewrite it. So then 2, I'm going to say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And I know that because vertical angles are congruent angles. Don't say toast, right? Explain your reasoning. Number three, angle three is congruent to angle four because whole reason, parallel lines cut by a trans implies alternate interior angles congruent. And step four, triangle GIA is similar to triangle TNA because of angle angle similarity. Now remember here, once I have angle, angle, I can check each of those off. Once they're all checked off, I can say that the triangles are similar. All right, last problem for this live stream. I am given that um, this is a parallelogram and DFB is a diagonal, and I want to show that DEF is similar to BGF. And I'm going to do this much the same way I just did that. I see vertical angles, and I see alternate interior angles. But the thing about this one that you need to be careful of is for alternate interior angles, you need parallel lines. And I am not given parallel lines, right? So I'm going to state that I have parallel lines here. So I'm going to say that DA is parallel to CB. And the reason I know that is because in a p-gram, I know that opposite sides are parallel. So then I can say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 because my same reason parallel lines cut by trans implies alternate interior angles congruent. Now you could also talk about vertical angles here, but we could get really fancy and say that's angle 5 and that's angle 6. Angle 5 angle 6 for the same reason, do it all in one step, and then step 4, triangle DEF is similar to triangle BGF because of angle-angle similarity. 
So again, this whole document is up on my teacher site if there's anything you want to go back through or you want to look at questions. If you have questions about anything, send them along to me. And similarity is a pretty major topic, so make sure this is something you feel comfortable with. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and keep studying.